Hello Internet, I'm Farrell and welcome back to the Space Engineers Update Parody Series with today's video for release 1.186. My apologies for not being on the Update Parody set this week, but, well, normally the problem with YouTube videos is that they're too dark. That's decidedly not the case now, as you can see. So what you're going to be watching instead is footage from me getting back up to the same tricks I did after the physics update, playing around with the changes. And sure enough, I found a few things this time. More on that as we go along. Can't give away all the spoilers up front after all, right? So the 1.186 major update easily tops the list of the longest set of patch notes and related material I've seen so far in the game. This particular update, I'm tentatively naming the Jeremy Clarkson update because the jetpack power and speed enhancement. And because frankly, I suspect the engineer's face should probably be distorted like this during such sudden acceleration and deceleration. Before I get too deep with the update, but I'm pish, this video is going to be highly condensed. There's no way I could touch on even half of the updates of the game unless I told Wasted that this week's interstitial video would be a two hour long video. So let's get a look at the bug fixes because there's lots of them. And most importantly, top of the list is everyone's most hated bug, the dead horse bug has finally been killed off. At long last, we can feel safe again knowing our turrets won't be pissing away magnesium endlessly. Two bugs impacting the conveyor system have been dealt with, which should resolve long-standing issues with conveyor networks randomly borking themselves in multiplayer. The T key for auto-block rotation is now persistent and will stop turning itself back on. Parts of blocks that were sticking around after destruction shouldn't stick around any longer, though that last one is probably because the entire block damage visuals got overhauled, meaning that all blocks are now packed with gunpowder or gasoline to extra ensure their proper destruction. Camera clipping in tight places has been improved, thruster effects should no longer persist when they are turned off, and cone of lights disappearing when the source light is out of view have all been fixed. But the problem where lights don't randomly light the world is still there, and in some cases, lighting that worked perfectly well before the update doesn't behave the same now. In fact, lighting has now completely reverted to its broken state in large underground areas, just like it was back in May 2017, thanks to changes in ambient lighting and HDR. Still with me so far? Good. Most of these are all welcome fixes, but at the same time, keep in mind that some of these fixes are from having the system behind it being gutted and rebuilt which does raise the potential for new undiscovered bugs. Oh boy. Moving on to the visual changes, and uh, well, as you can see, like I said, I'm not on the update parody set this week because I might as well just stare into the sun if I wanted to really be in there. What we've gotten is a lot of visual overhaul that does look pretty, and to Keen's credit, doesn't seem to tax the game performance much on systems built in the last two years. But at the same time, they're not practical for day-to-day -day builds or survivor builds for me personally. I can appreciate the pretty explosions and detonation scheme, but at the same time, it kind of breaks immersion to see an armor block act like it was just full of nitroglycerin when it was hit by a missile. However, that's a small price to pay to finally get control over time of day, which has been ported from our old lovable debug screen. Just not any of the controls that are now needed to fix the problems with lighting in underground areas. Sigh. The other big visual change came with a significant boost to the saturation and intensity of colors in the game, bringing it back in time to the Space Engineer's Lux days, which now means that that release is now completely moot. While the discussion surrounding that change has been careful to suggest that this is actually a fix, the reality for all this is that nothing in the game looks like it has for the past three years, and it now takes a concerted effort to try to actually get the old colors back. While the vibrant colors do look nice, the reality is in that space, blocks are going to be subjected to a lot of other things that our atmosphere filters out, like UV, which means the vision of a bright and vibrant EGA color palette just doesn't mesh well with how I personally feel the game should look. Adding to that woe is the fact that glass textures went through yet another change, and this time eliminated a texture file that quite a few mods relied on, breaking their appearance in-game, and also preventing the game from rendering properly when you roll it back to the previous version. Now add to that the arrival of our old, new skybox. Now as rightly was pointed out ahead of time, we can certainly swap to any skyblocks we want. The workshop is full of them after all. Except some skybox mods were very quickly jumped on as being the problem behind not being able to load heavily modded worlds after the update. Oops. On a more positive note, Wheels got quite a bit of attention in this update with the default settings, available settings, a new dynamic center of mass, suspension jumping, voxel interaction improvement, and better robustness of the wheels and suspensions. This has all contributed to what seems like a net positive on the ease of building and operating wheeled vehicles in this, our space simulator. Unfortunately, the new suspension jumping feature seems to need some rebalancing, uh, given the height that some of these designs are achieving, and uh, 
Not to mention the rather annoying bug, though amusing, that means the server operator on multiplayer is able to trigger jump of all manned vehicles when they press their X key. Though this did lead to much hilarity in the latest Engineer War stream. For an update that was pushing a lot of hype to realism, we have a change that actually diminishes it, but for the right reasons, namely stability, gameplay, and performance. Which brings me to the changes to player movement. The ability and reality of wearing a spacesuit that is bulky, restrictive, and confining, somehow with this update, we are now suddenly Usain Bolt. Mark's blog does detail that they needed to try to blend things with the movement to make the sudden starts and stops less ridiculous looking, which is a nice attention to detail, but the fact of the matter is, it's damn near impossible to navigate in a tight space on jetpack without killing yourself by kinetic strikes, and trying to rendezvous with a moving object in space while your dampers are off is now frustrating a game of how does a peck of this key translate to suddenly moving eight blocks away? If NASA MMUs looked like this and worked like this, we'd be at Mars already. Because all we'd have to do is just press the key and we'd be there. So I can only hope that in a future update we'll have some sort of fine-tuned maneuvering and movement toggle modes made available. Something similar to a crouch for when you're walking, but without actually crouching down and possibly maybe a one-quarter power option for jetpacks. Then there's the audio update, the unsung, oft-ignored part of this update. New music, which, no offense to the composer, is something I have off anyways. And the tweaks here are pretty hard to pick up in some cases with a few exceptions. The parking brake being the most notable one, which now sounds more like pulling a parking brake in a car. But in a spaceship. Which has no wheels if it has landing gear only. By which we mean landing legs. That now make a mechanical clenching sound. Though it does make me laugh a little bit with that sound, so I suppose that's okay. Performance improvements this week touch turrets, textures, models, the ore detector, a new sync distance setting for dedicated servers, optimizations for grid splits, multiple turrets firing, upgrading the upgrade module, and, of course, voxels. As speculated by the community, Medieval Engineers has finally contributed something back to this base engineer's code base in that we have more efficient and properly working voxels. Well, more on that in just a second. All in all, there's a little something for everyone here and certainly a good package of updates to push out. Unfortunately, the level of control over some of these changes is somewhat lacking, so we hope that future updates will embrace the sandbox mentality and allow for some more fine-tuned tweaking of some of these settings. And perhaps porting over a few more items from the debug menu so I can stop getting this and get back to this, or even this in an easier manner. But I'm sure the question you have all in your minds right now is why is Feral still showing us this footage of boring drilling? The answer to that is simple. I broke voxels again. This is the same world that I've been using for mining tests, and as far as my vertical miner goes, the improved voxels let me get to 1.42 kilometers beneath the surface before, as I might put it, motive friction against the craft disabled the onboard power systems, or more simply put, it bashed itself to death against the walls of the very shaft it was digging. This is twice the depth of what I've been able to previously achieve without slipping through the voxels, and the fact that the vehicle failed before the voxels did is a good sign. However, that's not to say that I haven't run into a few issues while playing the game elsewhere. Now as for the voxel slip itself, basically I was working on trying to really push the envelope and I made a 750 large ship drill platform and all tabbed out to go finish up some additional work elsewhere. What I came back to was this. So that's where we're at, a few bugs and things I'd like to see some more toggles for, but all in all, it's an acceptable update. I've also been a lot luckier than many people who've been having problems with older hardware suddenly not being capable of running the game. I've done my own benchmarking and have my own conclusions, but frankly, Wasted is light years ahead of my testing regimen and data collection, so I'll leave it to him to draw the final conclusion there. Just a note, if you're having problems with loading your worlds and you have a custom skybox installed, well, I hate to suggest it, but you're going to have to live with the new default skybox. Pull the other skybox out, as your custom skybox could be what's causing the problem with loading. Also be aware that rolling back versions to previous versions of Space Engineers at this point is probably going to cause its own headache because there's a texture file that was removed in the update, but it isn't restored when rolling back. Thanks for watching, folks. Fly safe or attempt clang per your personal preferences. I'll catch you next time.